Good morning. If you want to see how we restored this mission style rocking chair and upholstered it, stay tuned because that's what we're going to do today. Well, welcome to Memphis Monday 254, the 46th week. Uh, you recall last, uh, last week we had a shop tour and a kind of funny story. Started on a project, this is our completed project. Started on a project, discovered we had to do a lot more work on it than we originally thought. So uh, instead of uh, making it a two-parter, I went ahead and, and did the uh, shop tour last uh, last week, which I think turned out all right. Uh, but that, that's what we're going to do today. Here's your finished project. We really are going to get it done today. It's a long video, but uh, we really are going to get it done. We re-upholstered it, uh, re-did uh, the finish, and uh, uh, fixed some broken parts. And I think it's going to be a pretty good project. So let's knock off the chit-chat and get to work. Here's a, the oak rocker we have to uh, restore. It's actually structurally in pretty good shape. Uh, the finish is not real bad, but we're going to fix that up anyway. It's only structural problem that I've been able to find is this loose connection right here. The lady had asked me to fi uh, fix it up. Uh, her biggest problem with it is that this seat here is too soft. It just, when you sit on it, just kind of goes all the way through. So I think the first thing we're going to do is take this cover off and see what's going on with the springs and stuff in here. I'll start out by uh, carefully removing this bottom dust cover. Got the back off. I can't really tell where the, where the failure is yet, but you can see some of the parts. Um, you can see here the webbing and of course this is probably 70 or 80 years old. Um, but this is new webbing, and you can see that it's essentially the same stuff. Even got the same pattern on it. Now I'm taking the trim off. I don't have any more of this trim. What you do is after you staple the uh, upholstery fabric in there, you apply this trim. This looks like it's been glued in. I don't have any more of this. I'll have to get some. I don't know where you buy it, but we'll figure that out. Well, I got the cover loose. Let's take it off and see what... what we got. This is our fabric and this is what I propose to uh, recover it with, something like that. I got another, another shade of about the same thing. Like layers of an onion here, we'll just uh, tear this padding off. we can. It's like it's stapled in. Let me uh, let me take the staples out and we'll take this padding off. Looks like this uh, is all coming off in one big sheet here. So our padding, uh, we got this light padding here then we got this look like dust cover material more padding and they got a layer of burlap which is traditional on these chairs let's 
take that off. And then there's a, looks like it has some kind of webbing. Looks like maybe nylon webbing, which isn't traditional, I don't think. Yeah, I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to be too critical of this job, but I'll show you why this arrangement here failed. First of all, <coughs> there's not enough, this spring is <coughs> too small back here. Um, all these springs are pretty small. There's a spring missing here. There should be three across here and three across here. The tie job, tie job uh, these strings go, that go across here uh, should be doubled, and they're not. Um, they're also tied in the wrong places. Uh, this one, for example, that right there shouldn't be tied there. Um, and there also should be some diagonal strings going across this way. It's called an eight, uh, an eight knot tie. Each one of these should have eight knots instead of four. And another thing that reason it failed is this webbing down here is too loose. See that? That is supposed to be sprung. Uh, there's a special tool you use to tighten that webbing down before you nail it. And that was just put in there loosely. And so it's hanging down about two inches below the bottom of the chair. So another thing, there's not enough webbing in there. There should be four strips of webbing across this way and four across this way, and they only have three. Now we may not use webbing, I'm thinking about doing it a different way, but if we do do webbing, I'll show you how it's done. I got that clamp on the brace right there. I'm re-gluing those joints, uh, they got dowels in them. Um, what I'm working on now is this, where the arm connects into the back. This was connected with one of these uh, little old-timey screws like this. Well, the wood, this wood right here in the arm where that screw goes in had given out and this screw wouldn't hold it. So I'm increasing the size of the screw with one of these modern screws. Because I'm going to pour here you can see I got epoxy. I'm going to pour it down in that hole, let it run all the way down in the hole. And I will also work it, work it down in the hole with this, uh, with this uh, pick. And then I'll screw this in behind it. And then when that sets, it should uh, reinforce it. So let's give this scheme a whirl. Well, that was foolish. Okay, now I'll run this down in there. Not too tight. Now I'll drive this uh, oak dowel in there. This thing looks like it's been recovered a hundred times. You can see the nailer there, what bad shape it's in. 
I don't see how a guy can get a tack in that, but I guess you can. Um, this is the worst one over here. This brace right here is just flopping in the breeze. Looks like it's just uh, held in place with uh, screws. Let me, uh, let me take this piece off and see if we can fix it. What we have here is that all this wood is rotten. And I've never seen a, a chair with rotten wood before. But what I'm going to do, my scheme, is to go through here and cut a rabbit on the inside here. Well, I got that piece in there. What I did is I cut out that rabbit in there and inserted a piece of wood in the rabbit. Then I put the old piece back. The old piece was just held on by three screws and no glue. This one's all glued up, clamped up, and I got eight screws in it. What I'm doing here is attaching the jute webbing. I don't exactly know what jute is, but it's traditionally what forget. This is a uh, an upholstery stapler, and what makes it uh, one of the differences in it is it doesn't have a safety. You don't push it down. And before it'll work, it'll, it'll just work. You pull the trigger, and it <coughs> fires the staple out. So it's really kind of dangerous. You gotta kind of watch it. The reason I'm uh, using staples instead of nails, I'm using nails up here um, because that piece of wood is so badly ate up, the staples wouldn't even hold in it. You can see this wood is eating up over here too. I replaced that piece over there. I totally replaced this end down here. It was completely gone. And I fixed up this side over here a little bit. But staples are easier, a little bit easier on the wood than nails are. Then you bend it over. Okay, what we're doing here is stretching the uh, the web. Uh, this is called a gooseneck stretcher right here. What you do is you put it put it on the material. The teeth dig in, and then you can put pressure on it. So let's go ahead and nail that. You want these things to be drum tight, they say. And just like before, bend it over. Now down this end, I replaced the wood. This is new oak on both sides, so I can afford to nail it. This is a tack hammer. The split end down there is a magnet, so you can take your take your tack, stick it to it, then if you aim real good, you can get it started and then drive it in with the uh, driving end. Here 
Here I'm installing the springs over the uh, webbing. Those springs are held in place with these um, little clips here. And there's a special tool for everything. And these clips, this crimping tool is specifically designed for these clips. Go in there like that. And then you clip the you clip the springs to the uh, webbing. I'll give you a close up of that. I'm reaching up uh, through the bottom, get that clip over the spring, and crimp it down. They even got a tool that you, that you, a long tool you can put down through there, but you can just reach down through there if you don't have an edge. We'll try to do this one right here. Kind of push down so you, your uh, little clip catches on that uh, jute. Nominally, you want uh, four clips in each uh, each of the springs. Well we got the springs uh, tied in the bottom uh, to the webbing and now what I'm doing is I'm putting the uh, tie in the tops. Let me uh, focus in here and show you how to put those knots in. So I've got the uh, I've got the strings in going cross ways and long ways. What I'm doing now is putting the, the diagonal strings in. This is what's called an eight-way tie. Each, uh, you know, each spring is, is tied eight ways. What I do is I bring the string over the top like that. And then I bring it up on this side here. and then bring it through. Now you can adjust, you want these springs, these uh, springs to be plumb, so you adjust them and tighten your knot down. Just like that, and then go over and under. Now you can see my string is on this side now I just bring it through and keep this side tight and then you can just tighten down this side here. Once you get to the other side, you know, wrap it around your nail. And you're going to have a loose end. Most people staple these ends. Then tack your nail in. All the tying done. The point of the uh, tying the springs is to keep them <clears throat> so they compress straight up and down. They're connected at the bottom and they're connected at the top so there's no lateral movement in the uh, in the springs. You don't have to go with the uh, webbing and all that stuff. You can buy these, uh, they're called strap springs and they go down in the frame and you know so your, your uh, springs are sort of automatically aligned and centered. Now I'm uh, covering the springs, I put a layer, a couple of layers of this uh, synthetic 
material over the uh, springs and now I'm putting the uh, burlap over the uh, springs I've already I've already connected in it in the in the back So I'm stretching it, uh, stretching it from the middle first. I got the burlap in. I put these little pieces of foam along the edge. Uh, they, uh, they, they sell uh, some edge banding. It's called flanged edging. I uh, I don't have any so I just kind of made my own. So we're going old school on this. This is called Excelsior I think or, or uh, wood wool or something like that. It, but what you got to do is you got to shake out all the loose stuff and it likes to be moist, so after you shake out the all the trash, put a little uh, little water on it with a little soap in it. If you want it be kind of fluffy. Memphis, how in the world did you ever learn how to do this? I was telling my brother on the phone. I didn't learn how to do it. I'm making this up as I go along. Well, I might be exaggerating a little bit. I have upholstered chairs before. But the point is, just because you haven't done something before, doesn't mean you can't give it a try. Don't be afraid of trying new stuff. Okay, the reason I'm uh, putting this Excelsior on here is because I want this seat to be to be nice and firm. My friend I'm doing this for wants the seat to be firm. All over the Excelsior, I put this uh, layer of cotton here. And and then over this, I'm going to put a layer of linen. Here's a linen I'm going to use the square yard. I'm going to I'll just position it on there and tack it in place and then trim it after it's on there. This is a sort of pre-cover. I got the uh, free cover on there. Now we're going to cover it with uh, this fabric here. I'm going to position it so that this whole floral arrangement right here is right in the center of the seat. I'm putting the uh, final cover on it. One of the things you got to decide is how far to pull the 
material down. But in our case here, we're in real good shape because there's an actual trim line here. So I know I need to bring my cover right down to that line. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling, pulling the fabric down, starting from the middle and working out. I'll pull it down on this side. And then I'll stretch it on the other side. So I got it tacked in place over here. I've already got it tacked in place in front and the back. And I got tacked over here. Now I'll come over here to this side. Then I can pull it, pull it down and tack it here. Hey, you kind of got to get all four sides. Kind of stretched. Because you got to cut the corners. Now I'll cut a little diagonal here so I can fit this fabric around the arm. Then I can put a little uh, pleat in the fa fabric so that it falls right along that edge there. I'm putting the trim on uh, these kind of rockers. The trim is usually uh, a row of tacks. <clears throat> I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to. I'm using this braided trim here, but I'm putting some. Uh, decorative tacks along there anyway kind of go along with the tradition what I've done is use some of this uh, liquid stitch to hold down the trim then I put staples into the uh, trim. Then I run the tacks in behind that. Putting a dust coat cover on there. If you're replacing a dust cover, you might as well get this real dust cover material. It's uh, real cheap and available. Now well, here's our chair for uh, Memphis Monday 254. We, uh, we fixed the frame. We fixed the springs. We had to replace a... Uh, piece of the trim down the frame down here. We made our field expedient repair on that uh, arm. We reupholstered the uh, chair, put a little extra finish on it. Uh, 
and that'll do it for Memphis Monday 254. Well, I'll do it for another Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 254, the 46th week of uh, year five. Uh, today we completely restored this uh, old uh, rocking chair. I think it's a mission style. Um, had a lot of uh, frame repairs we had to do which delayed our progress. We had to upholster it, replace the springs and webbing and all that stuff. But I think we've got a lot of takeaways. So make sure you like, favorite, share, and all the stuff you do on the internet. But most important, make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along.